Previously on Uongozi. Telling me that I'm not going to win, for me, I feel that is uh, sensational. <laughs> yeah. The first person going home today is Joram. The second person going home today is Eunice. After several weeks of challenging tasks, intense vetting by the judges and emotional eliminations, the final lap of Uongozi is here. From over 12,000 applicants from across the country, 240 shortlisted, 16 finalists, only two remain standing. Aidan Abdullahi Muhammad and Solomon Wanyama Mulera. So what do they stand to win if they are Kenya's next leader? The winner of Uongozi will get a six-month leadership prize which will include an all-expenses-paid trip to experience six leadership and governance institutes across four continents – Asia, Africa, Europe and North America. A total of 1.2 million shillings stipend over the six-month period and a 3 million shillings grant to implement a public project of their choice. The Uongozi show is presided over by three judges. Mumbi Kaigwa, Tom Boyer, and Mweni Lundi. Leo, Leo, Leo. With no more tasks to be done, Aidan and Solomon need to now convince Kenyans that they can be the Kiongozi. To do this, the two will have to face a live studio audience of 200 people and answer unscripted questions from the public. It's now every man for himself. But first, Let's get to know them better. We are in Mombasa, the second largest city in Kenya and Solomon's hometown. A coastal town, it's renowned for its thriving tourism industry and is an economic hub having a prominent port and an international airport. So this is Portis Primary School for the Physically Handicapped. This is where I studied. I was here in primary from 2001 to 2003 and even after I left this place I was always thinking about it because it is the one point that really defines me. I can say like it was the turning point in my life because when I came to this school I was able to get education. They offered me free primary education long way before even this country had free primary education. And even after going to high school I couldn't just forget this place and so I came back before going to college, I volunteered my teaching services. Solomon alikuwa ni mwanafunzi mnyenyekevu na mpole, si mwepesi wa hasira na alikuwa na bidii darasani. Alikuwa mzuri kwa social, alikuwa atufundisha vizuri, tuwaelewa. Alikuwa hata kimuuliza swali, anakuelezea vizuri, anakuambia hii haifai kufanywa hivi, nafanywa hivi. Alafu unaelewa unafanya. Solomon attended his secondary school at Mombasa Secondary School for the Physically Handicapped, a boys-only day and boarding school located in Kisaoni. After I finished my fourth form, instead of just staying at home, I volunteered in a school. And luckily, I have these two gentlemen here in front of me that I taught. And I'm so happy that I'm meeting them in the high school I went to. From all of us here at Mississippi, Solomon Kiyomozi! After high school, Solomon joined Mombasa Polytechnic University College where he is a second year student doing a Bachelor's of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. And as he aspires to be the ultimate Kiongozi, we learn that he knows his way around machines as well. Uh, Solomon is one of those students who are very diligent. Uh, we have known Solomon for a long time since he was a diploma student. Uh, for some three years, he went through this mechanical engineering course and right now he's a second year in the Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering course and he's been doing very well. He's one of our top performing students and we are very proud of him. Solomon is a hard working person. The reason as why I say so because each and every time we find him in the library uh, reading until late. And also, he is also a trusted person because when he tells you something, he will have to come and accomplish it.
born in Western Kenya 24 years ago, Solomon is the last born in a family of six. His parents divorced when he was four years old and he was raised by his father till the age of 13 when he moved to Mombasa to stay with his sister and has lived there ever since. Solomon is a very good person because he is a very good person. He is sheria za familia ama masharti ama maagizo kimwambia fanya hivi anafuata vile ulivyomwambia mara nyingi huana ubishi na ni mpole the boy amekuwa hata kama mwalimu wa watoto wangu in fact watoto wangu wanampenda sana ni wawili wako high school yani yani ni ukipata akija hapa anagada hata hawa watoto wadogo unapata wamemzingira hivi amekuwa kama grandfather Solomon takes us on a tour to meet some of the residents who stand to benefit from his project should he win the competition. So we are in Mwamlai in Jombu, Jombu constituency of Mombasa County. Looking at the families you realize that most have households have at least a relative or a family member who is either divorced or separated. My project intends to help them change their situation in terms of raising their children whereby they'll be facilitated, they'll be given guiding and counseling on a regular basis. The project intends to provide entrepreneurship skills so that they are able to start small businesses in life and raise their children as independent mothers. Muradi anasaidia kitu ya kwanza, Salomon ni kijana mzura na roha ya imani. Ame tukujia baka yumba zetu na sisi tunashida nyingi so anasi moja na mbili. Tukonaye watoto yatima na tukonaye watoto amewacha baba zao wa mama wanasota na kuteseka na hakuna baba anaangalia baba kila mmoja mpata njia zake. Tunamutumaini Solomon akishinda. Tuna imani na yeye. And now to the second finalist, Aidan Muhammad, a proud father of five. Uh, I always tell my young family, they are very young. Uh, that there is nothing which comes easy. Uh, we know the life we, we've come through. I married this young lady immediately when I finished my form four. God has been good to us. Uh, I got immediately, I got admitted to college. I left her with my mother. Uh, when I was admitted to college, she only had this boy. <laughs> I went through college without seeing them for, for almost almost three years but she was very patient she was a very a very shy lady as you can see and, uh, and uh, a down-to-earth lady uh, even then i got god is good i got uh, employment with a local uh, uh, medical center after staying with that medical center for one year i got a job with camry that's then when we started building our family now. So I'm happy for this family and hope Mungu atatujalia zaidi. As you can see, a young family. So, what did Aidan's boss at Camry have to say about him? Some of the key words I would use to express him would be passionate, um, committed. Um, and I think those are two words which really encompass his whole approach to his work and also his outside um, activities. We now hit the dusty roads to Aden's hometown, Elwak. Elwak is a town in Mandera County, northeastern Kenya, four kilometers from the Somali border and over 900 kilometers from Nairobi City. Here, we get to meet Aden's extended family and see where he intends to implement his project should he win the competition. <laughs> Ilmanki Yaf, Anaf, Adaf, Nuchufa, Kanatol, Kabia, Kanad, Mani, Insi Haderi Nagini, Dabia, Kanat, Hirgu Dutin, Gadufu Fuji, Isamongozi, Elwak, Kamil Kenya, Kamil Ratau Fidi. Sai Radaga, Akara, the Bahidi, Saka in Noja, Kara, the Moon in Radaga, Ira, Arg, Kaoja, Kara to Nizuman, Haristi, Kajiran Kibe, Kobolis, Kafayan, Ten, Nepo, Kapanatim. 
يعني بليو إني بالقبو إني مسومو الدم كإرجاء إني نعمل أخس كإنه بليس جيران كي كأبليس كورال كي كأنا فيني والإنجر أنا فيني إن إدوم مسلحة كأنا بجيران كي كي والين لول كأوجاج إنسا أنا بجيران كي كي والول لينغو إن مسلحة إدوم تين مد أخس Aiden attended Wargadud Primary School before proceeding to Elwak High School and his teachers have fond memories of him. His family were usually had us and he used to come from uh, several kilometers uh, to come and uh, learn with others. Despite all those difficulties he has achieved and uh, the school live to remember him. The hope of a teacher always is to say that to believe that his children or his student will be one of the useful members of society. And today I'm pleased to see that you are here because of him. Aidan takes us on a visit to Kurkura village, situated between Wargadud and Elwak towns, where he intends to implement his project should he win the competition. From the word go, I wanted to be associated with uh, the less fortunate. What when you have this idea? I can remember saying the best decision I've ever made is to pay school fees for, for orphans. That's one of my best decisions and I'm proud of myself. This is a young boy, Adam, the team story which I, I, I put in, in my proposal. It's a real, a real story. Uh, I know what, how it, I, I paying for him helped him. Thank you, Sana. I'm a cracking liquor. School fees for eight years. I'm working in the private, I'm a private. I come in and get some tumba and get lip of his. In the corner and around the time, I wouldn't have any any work. In the car, I'm going to go to the road. My project is to say the sana, the side of the door, the team, the fry, I come on, it's a big project, it's a foul. It's the morning of the debate and the final two will be subjected to the final test fielding unscripted questions from a live audience. This time round, it's not up to the judges, but to you, the public, to decide who you would like to be your next leader. I'm up to the task. I'll put my 100% and do my best and convince the public, ultimately, to vote for me to be the ultimate winner of Hongos. I'm confident to remind you, we came here 16 of us uh, as Wongozi uh, show. We are left two of us. So I've been having all that confidence from the day one. And I'm, I'm more, more, more confident even now. Since we are only two, I'm confident to be the ultimate winner. I feel happy being in the final. Yeah, but at the same time, some are excited and anxious because I don't know how it will be and I don't think whether anything that has happened in the past weeks has prepared me for this. Every, everything is a new experience to me. Yeah. I think I'll perform well, yeah. having gone through the various tasks. I think I've grown in terms of confidence, in terms of how I'm supposed to present my ideas. I'm not just supposed to generalize but at least tackle issues one by one, give solutions because that is what is expected of me as a leader. And now, the moment of reckoning is here. 200 audience members, two contestants and one host. It's time for our final two to battle it out for the top position of Kiongozi. Good evening and welcome to this special edition of the Ongozi Debate coming to you from the Lewis Leakey Auditorium here in Nairobi. I'm Smriti Vidyarthi Mohindra. Our two Ongozi finalists are ready to engage 200 members of a live studio audience as we discuss leadership, corruption and other governance issues facing our country. Please join me in welcoming our two finalists, Aidan Mohammed and Solomon Wanyama. <laughs> Gentlemen, a very warm welcome to you. 
Each contestant will have two minutes to respond to a question as put to them by a member of the live audience and one minute to follow up where necessary. And our first question today comes from Daniel Kiale in Machakos County. What makes you think that you can change the face of leadership in our country, Kenya? Bearing in our minds that for the past many years, our country has been characterized by leaders who are egocentric, selfish, and corruptible. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. Solomon, you won the toss to go first. You have two minutes to respond to that question. Okay, thank you. Leadership first is a process. It involves, as a leader, ensuring that you understand where the people want to go, that is their goals, and then guiding them, helping them to achieve these goals. And then as a leader, you also need to, the moment you realize the vision of the people, look at the resources you have, and then channel all your dedication, your strength towards enabling these people to achieve their vision. I believe I'm the kind of the leader that this country needs. I understand that we have national values, Article 10 of our Constitution, Patriot, patriotism, the rule of law, integrity. And these are values that have been instilled in me first through the process and then secondly, these are values I've learned throughout my entire life. And therefore with these values, I do understand that the Kenyan people, the Kenyan public are faced with certain challenges. First of all, we have the issue of employment. We have the issue of corruption. We even have the issue of the self-esteem the people are not even able to come out and express their views because they are afraid of the leaders. You realize that most of the time when people step out in the streets to express their opinion on issues, the police force is unleashed to them. But as a leader who understands that people have rights, their freedom to speak, I will ensure that these rights are protected. I will ensure that people have employment. And how do I do this? I'm a young person, and therefore I understand that people have talent. But when these talents are directed to areas where they can be nurtured, we have theaters, we have churches, those, those are religious, pl religious places, and these talents can also be nurtured in schools. And therefore, I believe I'm this kind of leader who understands the vision of these people, who understands that our people are tired and they can no longer wait for the kind of leadership that I want to deliver. Thank you. Aidan, what makes you think that you can change the face of leadership in this country? First, I'm a honest person, a trustful person, a person who befits Chapter 6 of the Constitution. Chapter 6 of the Constitution talks about integrity and honesty. I'm that person, and that is the leader Kenya, Kenya wants. Many a times we cry about the leaders we have but it's us who put them uh, into the positions of leadership. It starts with us, it starts with you, the public, and with myself. If we vet our, public, our, our leaders, take the, them through chapter six, we get the leader who has uh, good integrity, who has self-esteem, who has the people, the people at heart. Leadership is not about, about a person, it's a process. It's about uh, heading the people, taking their views, knowing what they want, participating through it, and giving the public what they want. The leadership of, of this country, the one we ourselves elected, the buck stops with us, the public. So the leadership needs to be changed. We need to vet our leaders to be the, the leaders of integrity. What we are lacking in this country, it's honesty and, and trust. Honesty is what needs to be instilled in every person. So I'm that kind of leader who believes in people, who has the people at heart, who will think always about the people. The people. So me being in the leadership, I'll try to put my country first, because we have no other country, and will be a uh, taking the country where, where we, we ought to be. Thank you. Gentlemen, you realize that you yourselves as potential leaders may not be self-centered or egoistic, but leaders always must surround themselves with peers and colleagues. 
and they may be self-centered, selfish, and egoistic. How, Solomon, would you deal with your colleagues who influence you as a leader? Okay, first and foremost, I believe the good books, that is the Bible and the Quran have told us that a thief will always walk with a thief. And therefore, my first process as a leader is to surround myself with people of wisdom. However, if I do realize that I have people with selfish interests at, selfish interests at heart, then what I need to do if I can't talk them out of this, then is to put them out of my leadership. Because it is not my agenda that, that I'll be advancing, but the agenda of the people of this country. And therefore, if I have such friends, then they're no longer my friends. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Solomon. Aiden, same question goes to you. You have a minute to respond. Yeah, it's very clear. The Constitution is very clear. We are guided by Constitution, which we all pass. To be a leader, I am guided by that Constitution. The persons who float that constitution, the person who don't follow the, the spirit and the letter of that constitution, never uh, be my, my body, to, to say the least. So I will make sure that people who surround me understand and follow the spirit and letter of the constitution. Those who don't have no space in, in, in my leadership. Okay, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. We got through the first question, many more to come, so keep going. And our next question this evening comes from Scholastia Muchangi from Embu County. As you are starting the devolved government, I would like you as the, the contestants to explain to, to us how you're going to be working with the leaders in the county level to make sure that your leadership skills are felt and the people of the counties benefit from these leadership skills. Thank you. Aidan, two minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, it's good to be in touch with the public and uh, mobilize the public to elect the leaders who befits them. I've learned the skills through this process, the skills of integrity. So I will use that skill to mobilize the community, inviting those, pe those people who they want to put in, in, into leadership because those are the same people who will lead them. There is no need of taking a seat back and electing the, the, the leaders. And five years down, down the line, we cry about it. So the skill I gain will be taken to the public, will, 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 will talk to the public themselves, and vet the leaders who will lead them. So the buck stops with me as a leader to engage uh, the, the Kenyan public and, and the community to understand what kind of leader they want. The leader who has a face value, the leader who can negotiate their problem, the leader who understands their problem. So I will, I will tell the public, starting with myself, to put into the scale of chapter six so that the leaders they have will be the leaders who, who will be serving them. Thank you very much. Go ahead, Solomon, the same question applies to you. Okay, first and foremost, I'd like the people of my county, the moment that I get there and these devolved governments are, play, are in place, to understand that there are issues that the devolved government will be dealing with. The issues of education in the county, the issues of agriculture. We, we will we'll be having health facilities for the county. And so it's only possible for these people to begin to seek these services from the devolved government when they, are, when they understand the functions of the devolved government. And therefore, my first duty will be to educate them. Let them understand that with this new system of government, it will no longer be Nairobi, it will just be Mombasa and the other, other counties in the country. And therefore, if they feel like the education systems are not, are not working, if they feel like they do not have the county health facilities in place, if they feel like the roads are unroadworthy or vehicles cannot pass, pass let's say that, then they should, under, they should address these issues with their governor, with their ward representatives. That way, I would have helped them understand where to, 
channel their energy. And then secondly, I will not be the kind of person who just tells them that, like, take your problems there, take your problems to this person, no. I've also, ha I've also learned some leadership skills whereby you don't have to wait for the, for the governors, you don't have to wait for the senators. When your street is dirty, when your compound is dirty, when your children is not going to school, and you're there just complaining that the governor has not done this, the governor has not provided school fees. It's like you are taking your responsibility to the other person. And therefore, my responsibility will be, will be to tell them that the back stops with you. Wash the, clean the front of your house and the whole street will be clean. Take your child to school and the whole country, county will be educated. Thank you. All right, Solomon, thank you. Finish there just in time. All right, let's turn our attention now uh, to the next question. That's coming from Frida Mwenda from Meru County. Frida, what's your question? You being the possible winners of the Uongozi competition, what techniques are you likely to apply to help us shun corruption in Kenya, bearing in mind that Kenya has been ranked among the most corrupt countries and our leaders have failed? Thank you. Solomon? Okay, thank you. First and foremost, I believe in for information is very essential. And therefore, for us to fight corruption, and I being the possible you know, winner, I do advise the public that you can only fight what you know. You can only fight a battle that you understand better. And therefore, if you're able to understand the, co the corruption in place, for example, let's say a scandal has taken place. So it is your duty to seek this information and when you get this information, do not be the kind of person who, is, who shares just the information with your friend and that is over. I'm looking at a kind of person who is proactive, asking questions, why did this take place? Why did it have to be this way? Because information, again, as you realize, is, that, is your entitlement. You are entitled to information, be it from the government. You can seek it even in the internet about the scams that have happened and therefore react to it. And just to inform you, the chapter, not chapter, Article 35 is what entitles, entitles you to this information. And also, one other way of ensuring that I do fight corruption is to, to educate the public, to make them aware of their rights. If, a, if you have to pay a bribe for you to access a service, then that is injustice to yourself. And therefore, if you do understand your right, then you won't have to pay money to receive what is duly yours. Yeah. And then another measure that I think is very important is to, as much as possible, to not to interfere with the judiciary. Okay, I know I do not have perhaps the capacity to speed up a case, but then if you feel like institutions in place are getting into the way of the judiciary, it is your right to voice that out because the, the independence of the, the judiciary should be protected and that's the only way we can have speedy resolutions of the cases. Okay, Solomon, thank you. Your two minutes are up. But before I turn our attention to Aidan, let me give you a follow-up question. Why do you think Kenya has failed in the fight against corruption? What are the reasons for failure? Kenya has failed in the fight against corruption first. There are no protection measures, for example, to allow a person to come up, to speak about an issue, and then that person feel like he's secure from harm. You realize that the moment a person speaks about an issue, especially in government, a corruption issue, if that person is not going to, to go missing, then that person has to be a fugitive in his country. He has to run away. And so if, if measures were to be in place, measures that encourage citizens to come up to speak about an issue that they know, an issue that has happened, a corruption issue, and they are assured of their security, then it would be very easy. And then I think Kenya, to some extent, has, been, has, has relaxed when it comes to cooperating with international organizations in terms of curbing corruption, because money is usually stored in the Swiss accounts and nobody follows up. Okay, thank you. You finished just in time. Aidan, the same question applies to you. That question coming from Frida, who's from Meru County. What techniques as a leader would you use to fight corruption, considering that Kenya is uh, ranked as one of the most corrupt countries? 
Yeah, the fact is Kenya is ranked 139 out, 139 out of 176 most corrupt countries, which is a shame. Uh, and also, well, the statistics show that 41% uh, of the urban population uh, uh, give bribes. We were told 16, 41% uh, of, of urban population pays 16 bribes every month which is also a shame to us. So it starts with I and you. If I don't give bribe, which is a form of corruption, uh, the, 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 the checker would, would take the burden. The three forms of uh, uh, abating corruption, one is prevention. We need to put funds in place to engage the public to know the dangers of corruption in this country and the, the problem corruption can bring to this country, that's prevention. The second is detection. We want, need to put a good mechanism in place uh, to detect crime. We should not wait for uh, corruption to happen so that we act. So there should be a good measures in place in terms of law, in terms of uh, our institutions. We have Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. We need to restore it. We need to give it strength for it to uh, Detect, for it to detect corruption. The other one is sanction. We need to sanction persons who are involved in corruption. Many a times, they involve themselves in graft, they steal billions of money from uh, our coffers, and go scot-free. The next thing they do is to give uh, another corruption to bail themselves out. So it's important for us to sanction and go after the, the peoples who uh, take, steal from us. As you mentioned, Aidan, corruption is at all levels, from the very top yeah. to the very bottom. Yeah. Is it really possible to eradicate corruption at all those levels? And if so, where do we start? The fish rots from its head. It's, it's, the back stops with the leadership, the leaders we put in place. If the leaders we put in place are not corrupt themselves, have gone through the, the constitutional uh, vetting, we can, we can eradicate uh, corruption. But if we don't vote in the people who have integrity, who have no past corruption, still corruption will thrive. So it's, it's us, the public, and I, and you, to vet our own leaders, to put the people who have integrity, who have no corruption on their court. One thing we, we need to put in place as a country, if someone involves in graft, however small it is, we need to bar that person out of public office, for example, for, for 10 years probably, so that it pains someone that when you steal from public coffers, you won't serve the same public for a very long time so that you can learn from it. Thank you very much to both of you on that issue of fighting corruption. Now, our next question comes from Transoya County, and that question is directed by Grace Waidera. Grace, go ahead. You have been entrust entrusted with three, three million shillings from this project to go and start and run a project at your own county, Mandera and Mombasa, re respectively. So how sure are we as Kenyans here in back at home that these funds are not going to be misappropriated. Thank you. Thank you. Solomon, two minutes to respond to that. I do have a vision as a young person of this country and three million is not the best that I want to achieve in life and therefore I do believe that with this little money perhaps if I'm entrusted with it and I utilize it effectively then it will give the people of Kenya confidence in me to entrust me with the bigger office that I'll need in future to entrust me with their budget a budget that runs to maybe a trillion and therefore first and foremost I'll ensure that I utilize this money effectively to secure my future in this country, the confidence that the people have in me in this country and the career and in terms of career I am talking about the, my leadership career in this country and therefore I look, at, I look at this project that I'm going to initiate as a platform because it is a way in which Kenyans can be able to understand that I can be trusted with the money because I'll have been tested. And then secondly, my project, let me highlight this, is about empowering women and these are single mothers and therefore 
to use this money appropriately is to ensure that they are empowered. Yeah. So I'll, I assure you I'll use it well. Thank you. Solomon, thank you. Aidan, your response. How can we ensure that that money, that three million shillings, will not be misappropriated? One, trust is very important. Uh, and I'll assure that I will live to the standard, to that standard. I will use that money transparently and open to audit any time so that uh, any, any institution who want to uh, see how that money is, is used is open to it and transfer and, and come and, 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 and check the record any time. Apart from recording, you know, trust is very important and, and honesty. So I believe I'm honest and uh, my values always stand for trust and, and justice. I will use that money uh, in the right project I intend to put. The project uh, to tell you about is about putting uh, income generating activity to at the end of the day pay school fees for orphans. So orphans are one of the neglected uh, lots in this country. So the money which is going to uh, people who are for, uh, fortunate can't be misappropriated as far as, as I'm concerned. So I believe I have that trust. I have that uh, passion for this project myself. I want it to grow bigger than this, not only in Mandera County, but moves to another county and educate the orphans which uh, could have not gone, got the education. So I believe uh, I will use that money uh, the way it's, uh, it's for its intended purpose. And the, the audience can, 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 can take me, the, can, can bank on that, because these are the same public uh, who, will, who, will vet, who will vet the project. So I can assure the project will be according to its plan. At this point, ladies and gentlemen, each finalist will be given two minutes to tell us why Kenyans should vote for them to win this Ongozi competition. Solomon, your two minutes begin now. I believe Kenyans know where they are coming from and where they are at the moment. They are faced with a situation whereby leaders just want to be elected perhaps because they are youth. Leaders want to be elected because of their past without telling us where they want to take us. And I've lived in this country for so long not, and I don't even deserve to be told the problems of the people because I live them, I know, I know them. As a young person, I'm not even certain of my future, whether I'll get an employment. I'm not even certain whether, especially being male, whether I'll marry because I have no job. And therefore, leaving these problems, being with the doubt about this future, I believe I'm the right person to tackle the problems of this country because it is only the wearer of the shoe who knows where it hurts. I'm from a very humble background, but that doesn't entitle me to leadership. I've done some great things in society. The moment I finished my fourth form, I volunteered as a teacher, not for pay, but because, because I wanted to improve society. And so I believe that as Kenyans, you're looking at a person who is, who is eager to serve this country, to put the interest of the, of the country at heart and in front and to put my agendas behind, because I know that for this country to move forward, it is not my agenda that matters, but the agenda of the people. And the agenda of the people is to have a country devoid of corruption, a country where they can be able to speak without fear of intimidation. I stand for that because even me, most of the time, I've been afraid to speak about what I believe is right because I'm afraid of the tear gases. And with this fear in me, I don't think that as a leader I would unleash such force on the citizens. And therefore... Solomon, your time <laughs> is up, I'm afraid. Thank you. Aidan, we give you two minutes to respond and tell us why Kenyans should vote for you. Kenyans should vote for me because I'm a honest and trust, trust, trustworthy person. I always put Kenya first, not, my, not, not myself. I'm, I'm that courageous person who can face any eventuality who might come uh, on my way. 
So I believe I have that courage, that, that self-esteem to take this country uh, far. I've been tried and tested. I've been a leader in primary, head boy in primary. I was school head boy in secondary. I was student representative council chairman in college and currently representing employee, em, employees to uh, the administration. So I'm tried, tested, always put them first and me, 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 me second. So I bank on you Kenyans that I'll be serving you everywhere I go. Through Uongozi, I've been tested through uh, the tasks of leadership. Having all, all that experience through and taking uh, the experience of Uongozi together, I will serve you without fear or favor. I don't fear any tear gas of this country. I don't fear any, 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 any might leader of this country. I will put you first. I will put the Kenyan public first. So vote for me and I will never let you down. Thank you very much, Aidan Solomon. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, congratulations for coming this far so far. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give them a round of applause. Well, that is all we had time for on our studio debate tonight. But remember, this episode marks the beginning of public voting. You've watched them throughout the series. You've heard them tonight. And now these two finalists are counting on you to cast your vote. Who do you want to win? Who do you want to be the next leader here in Kenya? So if you want Aidan Mohammed to win, Send the name Aiden to 6264 or if you want Solomon to win this competition, send in the name Solomon to 6264. It's that simple. Thank you very much to our studio audience for participating in this debate session tonight and thank you at home. Voting lines are now open and will close on Friday 8th of February at midnight. If you think that Aiden is the leader that Kenya deserves, SMS Aiden to 6264. If you want Solomon to be the Kiongozi, SMS Solomon to 6264. Have a say in who your next leader will be. The winner will be announced on Saturday, 9th February in a live show starting at 7.30 p.m. Don't miss out. To continue this conversation, go to www.wongozi.co.ke or you can like our Facebook page, Wongozi Kenya, or follow us on Twitter at Wongozi254.